my name is Sarah Ayler, and I'm the Sales and Marketing Manager for Softbooks Company. And this week on Facebook, I showed everyone how to make two different kinds of DIY beaded chain. And I'm going to show you a third kind uh, here on YouTube. So let's review what I did on Facebook first, and then I'll show you how to make this a third style of chain next. So the first style that I showed uh, how to make is just your basic beaded chain by making links that will uh, link together. And I used these beautiful uh, check glass beads that you can find on our website in four different colors. They are a table cut uh, check glass bead. They come in this pretty topaz color. They also come in a beautiful dark blue, a purple, and then an aqua. I used the Softlux craft wire in the 20 gauge uh, non-tarnish silver plated. You could use a thinner gauge of wire if you wanted to. This just happened to be what I had on hand and I actually kind of like how it turned out with the size of a bead. So to make one of those uh, simple connectors, you only need a few tools. Um, you'll need your round nose pliers, a pair of chain nose pliers, a pair of cutters, and a pair of nylon jaw pliers. And I'll show you how to make one of those connectors. And then if you wanna watch more about that, you can always go to our Facebook page and um, look in our videos section to find that video. So I'm gonna go ahead and unspool a little bit of wire, use my nylon jaw pliers to pull it clean get all the bumps and kinks out of the wire. I'm gonna work right off of my spool of wire because um, that'll help me to save wire and not end up using too much extra. I'm gonna grab my round nose pliers first and I'm going to find a spot on my plier that is, um, you know, the right size diameter of loop that I'm going to make. And then I'm gonna stick with that spot on my plier throughout my bracelet. The first time I'm gonna go down, oh, that's probably like an inch and a half um, from the tip, and I'm just going to bend the wire so it's pointing at me, making a 90 degree angle. Push the wire over the top to make half of the loop. Move my plier to the side of my circle, and then pull under to complete my full loop and then I can slide it off of my plier. I like to grab my chain nose pliers, hang on to that loop and then just bend the wire around. You can use a second pair of chain nose pliers to do the bending if you want. I do suggest having two pairs. It is handy. If you're just making one bracelet or just doing a little bit, then I tend to just use my fingers, but a second pair of chain nose pliers can be super handy. And these pliers are for sale on our website as well. They're actually uh, under $10 and there's a full matching set um, that you can get. Each plier is, a, is like nine, I don't know, 9.98 or something like that. So there we go, we've got our first loop. I'm just gonna take my chain nose plier and just tuck in the end here to make sure that little tail isn't sticking out. I'm gonna grab onto anything. And then I'm gonna trim a decent sized length of wire using my cutters. Um, probably longer than I <laughs> normally would because again, I'm doing a video. So you can see it's a little wonky. So you just straighten that back out with your nylon jaw pliers again. So you've got your loop and your wire. I'm gonna grab one of my check glass beads. You can use any kind of bead for this project. You could use crystals, you can use pearls. You just wanna make sure you have the right gauge of wire to fit through the hole of your bead. And, um, and I think this would be pretty in any of the four colors available in our uh, check glass selection. And next, and you can find those on our website, which is right there. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do the second side of my link. And so I'm gonna go to about the same place on my pliers. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go up over 
and under. Creating my loop. If I already had a connector to connect to, now is the time that I would connect. And then I would go ahead and close this up. And if you want to, you can even take this long tail and you can wrap it around your bead um, to make an extra special looking link and kind of spiral it around. Just want to get it into the right spot and then I can keep going. You can see there, now I've got just like a little bit of an embellishment on my bead. I didn't do that on the bracelet, but here's just another option in what it looks like. And then I'm gonna come in with my cutters and just trim off that extra wire and close down my connector. And then I would just continue making those and connecting them as I'm building them to create this great beaded chain. So that is one option for beaded chain. The second one that I showed on Facebook in greater detail uh, is I showed how to make a chain using the wig jig, making these little S links. And then I just used a simple head pin to add these beautiful leaves onto my chain. So I'm gonna show you how to make the chain and one of these links, and then I'll move on to the third style that I haven't shown yet, which is making a chain using uh, jump rings. So for this style, I've got my wig jig that I'm going to use. And this is our Olympus. So it has the bigger peg holes that are further apart, um, but we do have a version called the Delphi, which has smaller peg holes that are closer together. They work in the same way. They're made out of the same um, clear acrylic material that's very strong and durable. Um, and in this case, I used the bigger one just because I wanted a bigger loop in the chain. If I use the Delphi, it's going to make a daintier, uh, smaller loop because the pegs are smaller. Um, which could be great too, but for me in this particular one, I wanted something a little bit on the um, larger size. So I'm going to use my 20 gauge craft wire again. I'm going to pull the craft wire clean and um, I'm going to go ahead and make a loop on the end of my wire. And I think right about here is the perfect spot. Just making what they call a P loop, your very first loop that you're going to add to your jig project. The jigs are great because you can do things that are far more complex than this. This is just a simple chain, um, but it's nice because it's gonna give you a consistent, uh, a consistent component. And so I slide that on and then I'm just gonna turn the jig to make my uh, project and turn it around my pegs to create my little S hook. Then I can slide it off of the jig and grab my cutters and I'm going to cut just like that to create my component. Now you're gonna make several of these. I think I used three for each earring, so you would need six total of these little S hooks to complete this pair of earrings. And you wanna make sure that you definitely use something like the wire whacker to work harden it. So you'd make all six work harden them by setting it on top of this nylon slab, um, which is the wire whacker. Take your other wire whacker and smack it down. You can do all six at the same time, which is what's really nice about work hardening with this, um, this particular tool. You can find that on our website as well. So when you have six of them, uh, or three for each earring, you connect them together by just gently opening up each link 
and then sliding in the next one and closing it back down again. And then once you've got all three of those together, you're going to use these beautiful check glass beads that you can also find on our website. There's a really limited supply of these. Once they're gone, they're gone for good. Um, they came out of our gallery recently. We don't have very many of them. Um, I'm gonna use those though, and I'm gonna slide my um, head pin. Let me find one. I just grabbed head pins from my um, beading box. So these are not head pins that we sell on our website, but we do have a lot of great head pin options on the website. We may even have some in our closeout um, section because we're trying to simplify our findings. So check that out for sure. Look how great that bead looks. It's so pretty. Okay, so I'm going to come in um, just above my bead. And this is called a, a wire dangle. So rather than a connecting on both sides, it just connects on the top. I'm going to do the same thing that I did on my connector. I'm going to make a loop. And this time I'm going to connect to the chain that I was creating using the wig jig. And again, you can watch this in greater detail on Facebook. I'm just reviewing, and then I'm gonna go on to my final third approach for making a beaded chain at home. So let me close this up, and you just wrap it around the base there, up to the bead, and then you can trim off your extra and then you've got um and you're going to do five of those in this earring so let's look at this close up so you can see my beaded chain down the center that I made with the wig jig and then it just has these little dangles hanging off of each one I did five dangles so you've got a dangle, a chain, and then a dangle, and then a dangle, a chain, and a dangle, and then the bottom, I just did one dangle. And look at how fun those are. And the little flashy side just kind of turns and spins. Sometimes you see it, catches your eye, other times it doesn't. So it's really a fun, nice earring and a great way to make your own beaded chain. So that was the second approach that I showed. Now I'm gonna show you a third approach that um, I didn't get to on Facebook that's just exclusively here for YouTube. And that is using um, a bead that has a hole going in a different direction. So in this case, we had a bead with a hole that was going up and down. So it was really easy, easy to use a head pin. And this is a bead that has a hole through the top. Um, so this is also a check glass bead you can find on our website. There are these adorable, beautiful red grape clusters. And um, I was thinking it would be nice to show how you would do this with like a dagger or a bead that has a hole going through the top rather than um, straight down the center. And then a second change here is that I'm actually just using some jump rings. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to grab five of these jump rings. Let me just wind this up a little bit and set it over here. I'm gonna grab five of these jump rings. Um, I have a pretty good size jump ring. I'm not sure on the millimeter size, but they're fairly large and thick, which is great for this earring. Um, you don't wanna use jump rings that are too flimsy or they'll pull apart really easily, so definitely get a thicker, stronger jump ring. And you can use two pairs of chain nose pliers for this as well, if you have two pairs handy. And I think that's a really great way to do um, jump rings. If you're only doing five like me, you can probably just use your thumb and it's no big deal. But if you're doing tons of these, like for a craft sale um, or a holiday sale, you may want to rethink that. So I'm gonna open up one more. I'm gonna slide in two on this one since it's a center. And then I'll close it up. I'm just making a straight line of connecting jump rings. 
And then the very last one I'll just attach to the bottom here. Gotta find the opening. You always open jump rings to the side rather than out. That keeps their lovely round shape intact. I'll close it back up. So I've got my middle chain. And now to attach the grape cluster, I'm gonna take my Softlex craft wire again. And I'm gonna take off a decent size. Of course, I wanna do my nylon jaw pliers over the top of it to get that um, lovely work hardening started and get it nice and straight. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say this is probably four inches of craft wire is my, my guess. And I'm gonna take this piece, I'm gonna slide my grape to the center of it. And then I'm going to crisscross my wires over the top. I'm gonna take my chain nose plier and I'm gonna come in right above that crisscross and straighten one of the wires up. And then I'm just going to take my fingers to wrap around the base with the other one. Just one little loop is good. You could go further if you really like a lot of wrapping. You could definitely take it further, but one is plenty, one will do, one will do the job. And do a little tuck in. So now I've got what looks like this. If I wanna straighten it some more, I can always take my nylon jaw plier, make sure I've got a nice straight connection going there. Now I'm gonna come in right above that wrap around, right above it, and I'm going to bend to the side to make my 90 degree angle. I'm gonna bend over my plier, adjust and under. So I'm making my loop and then I'm gonna wrap around the base. And I do kind of a messy wrap on these, just keep wrapping. It looks very organic and handmade. And when you have clusters of them, it doesn't really matter too much how it looks. And then I'll close in. So this week on our website, we have free shipping on all orders um, with coupon code FREE. And then I just open up my first jump ring and add my bead. And I'm gonna do the same thing for all five jump rings until I've got a full cluster of grapes. And this will make a really fun earring that's got a little sound. You can also take these fun little guys, either one of them, and hang them from a long necklace um, as like a, basically like a beaded tassel. Um, and that would be super cute too. So I hope you really enjoyed these fun ideas for how you can make your own uh, beaded chain using Softlux craft wire and some really fun and interesting tools. You can find uh, more information and all of our products that I use today on our website, which is softlexcompany.com. If you liked this video, please click the thumbs up and do subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this as we're constantly uh, trying to put up new content. Thanks so much. Have a fantastic weekend, guys.